at this absolutely amazing scene in front of us. Where else in the world can you see something like this? A lion and an elephant so close together. So this is my first meeting with one of the Ingama lionesses. Well, we think it's an Ingama lioness. I assume it is in this particular area. I have not yet encountered them before. Apparently, there are three brand new members of this particular pride that, as far as we know, there's a little bit of confusion and there's a little bit of a speculation, but as far as we know, there's four adult females in this pride, seven cubs, and now three new ones. And this could well be the mother because apparently we're not far away. And I keep saying apparently because I've only been here for a couple of days. I'm still learning my way around. But apparently we are not far at all from where those cubs were actually seen. And they're very, very tiny at the moment and denning off in one of the drainage lines, which is called a lugger. A lugger. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm getting there. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of this particular pride. They're closest to our camp and the area that we drive around in and get, for now, reliable signal. That will change as things go on and we'll be able to get signal throughout the area that we traverse. But I think we're going to be spending a lot of time with the Angama ladies. Hey, gorgeous. She is beautiful. Now, yesterday I had my first encounter with the Ridge Pride that were feeding on an elant that they had caught and killed. Ooh, this bull's getting closer. They seem to be relatively comfortable in each other's presence. Everything's so open here that there's no real need to stress. He knows she's there. She knows he's there. She's just keeping an eye on him just in case he decides to come and chase her. He doesn't seem to have that on his mind, though. And, of course, she knows that she is faster and far more agile than he is. Ah, oh, but that is an incredible shot, Dave. Two iconic animals right up next to each other. Now oh, she's looking at him. Hey, big boy. Oh... Getting closer. He's probably, it's a little bit deceptive because of the way that she's sitting on a, on a sort of a ridge or a small termite mound in that I think that they're probably about at least 30 meters apart. So they're further apart than they look. It looks at the moment like he's actually towering over her when I look at what you're seeing. But she's probably a little bit further away than she appears to be. And good morning to Violet. Violet, you would like to know if these two animals are typically aggressive towards each other. I would say most encounters are relatively peaceful, provided that there's plenty of space between the two of them. They know each other of old. There are species that has, or two species that have evolved side by side. Lions can and do hunt elephants in certain areas, if they, especially if they are really particularly struggling to find food or if there's big lion prides. And elephants often chase lions. Uh, we've seen that often on Juma, particularly with lions on a kill. If an elephant herd comes through, they tend to chase the lions away, the lions run off, and then they come back as soon as the elephants have moved away. Elephants don't particularly like predators. It doesn't have to be lions. It can be leopards. It can. I've never seen. I personally have never seen an elephant chase a cheetah, but I'm sure it happens just as they will chase wild dogs and hyena and anything like that. So it's not that they're aggressive towards each other, really. They just don't enjoy each other's company, particularly. <laughs> and Kim, I think that that particular question leads on quite nicely. In my opinion, the king of the bush is of, uh, most definitely an elephant. And they're just the biggest things out here, particularly a big bull elephant. They are, once they've reached a certain age, they really are too massive for anything to challenge them, both in terms of vehicles on the road 
Bad lines. I would say that, hands down, that title goes to the elephant. That whole king of the jungle thing doesn't really apply out here. But it does provide us with some amazing, amazing images. It gives you a sense of scale as well. This place is so absolutely vast. Uh, Anthony, you want to know if there's any differences between the lions of South Africa and the lions of Kenya? Can I get back to you on that? I mean, yes, there will be biological, small biological differences in terms of genetics, but nothing major in terms of their physical appearance. You might find that the development of their manes is slightly different, the ages at which they develop their manes. But what will be different is their social behavior, or at least their, their, sort of, their interactions with each other. And it'll be interesting to see exactly how that dynamic plays out. Uh, there are all kinds of differences. Oh, sorry, Dave, I was about to go back to talking about the lioness and the differences, sorry. Um, there's all sorts of differences just in terms of what they have to deal with out here. So their hunting strategy might be quite different. Their, their way that they have to approach the whole migration is also different. The migration is a time of plenty for them. Food just arrives basically at their doorstep, and they don't really have to move much then in the season when the wildebeest leave, and the place goes back to being slightly quieter, then they have to work slightly harder. So there will be absolutely be differences. Hey girl, you got little ones somewhere. Wouldn't you like to show us? It would be very nice of you if you did. Ah oh, well, we'll see them. We'll see them at some point. Look at that. Oh, and we've got a third species. Actually, we've got a fourth species as well. Dave, if we have a look over there, we've got two approaching buffalo bulls and one warthog. Everything seems massive here. I can't quite decide if that's because of the space or the food abundance, but everything seems to be double the size that it, not quite double the size, that is a massive exaggeration. It just seems to be a little bit bigger. These buffalo bulls are dotted around everywhere here, and the grass is so long at the moment that I would absolutely not want to walk around here, because all of a sudden you drive past and a buffalo bull pops up right next to the road, but right next to you, and you'd have absolutely no idea he was there unless he sticks his head up. And there you can see there's a yellow-billed oxpecker sitting on his back. The more common species here. And there we go. We've seen three of the typically iconic big five, if we can use a very outdated term, and one warthog. Kim, talking about predators, iconic predators, you want to know if there's any wild dogs in the Mara. Very, very few, apparently. Um, one of the big things that has happened with in, it's something that a problem that we share in South Africa, but especially here, is wild dogs interacting with domestic dogs. Now, there's a very different approach here in Kenya, and it's just a different approach. It's not, it's not better, it's not worse, it's just a very different approach, and it has to be because this is a completely separate country with different political issues. But there are no fences around these reserves, which means that wild dogs, of course, could potentially much even more easily than in South Africa. They can come into contact with domestic dogs that spread diseases like rabies and distemper. And there's very few wild dogs running around. Apparently they are seen occasionally, but I think not very frequently. But imagine, imagine a pack of wild dogs hunting on these open areas. We're gonna see lions hunting, we're gonna see cheetah hunting. Brent's already seen all of those things. It is going to be spectacular when it happens. I'm still trying to show you the banded mongoose, though. That's next on my list of things I want to show you. They're everywhere. Something you don't see on Juma. We never manage to get them on camera because they just run away. They've been running around this lioness all morning, but now I can't see them anymore. They've disappeared. Gone off foraging.
right. Oh, the lioness is up. Where are you going, girl? Hold on a minute. I wonder if she's not going to take us round. Apparently there is a road on the other side. I think what we're going to do is we're going to race to catch up with that lioness. But what we'll do for now is we'll send you all the way back to Jumit, to Ali, to see if she's had any luck.